At last, something beautiful you can truly own. Oh, and news time is about the television upfronts and why ads are so important to them. It's news time. Delivering to you the news you didn't know about, the news you didn't care about, and the news you didn't know you cared about. With host, Chad White. Now, here's that host, Chad White. It's rad that ads are getting the due, but don't be mad or sad when bad ads are clad with drab fads. Welcome back to News Time. I'm your host, Chad White, and this is the comedy news that also raps that you didn't know about. In three short weeks, the television upfronts will grace the trades. Upfronts, you may be saying? Yes, upfronts. Fans of this show will know that I've spoken on them before. Twice, actually. During episodes when the show was still trying to find its voice. Some might say that we're still trying to do that. Before, I gave a rundown of what shows were going to be there for that year. This year, however, I think I should actually explain what the upfronts exactly are. Upfronts are very important for the television industry, more so the advertising part of it. It, it marks the beginning of a most advantageous period for ad men because it's a cycle when they purchase ad time upfront along with new and returning shows. When the fall television season begins, the best commercials are paired with their best show counterparts. How this works uh, with the streaming age, I'll never really know. The extent of the upfronts usually take place during the third week of May, but the planning for the parties begins now, seriously, and all of the information is out there for us commies to find. Think of the upfronts as TV's version of the Electronic Entertainment Expo, or NFL Draft Weekend, or Essence Fest. I think I've covered all my possible bases. The, there are spectacles ranging from 40-foot sushi bars and hotel throne, Broadway-style feats with live animals and line dancers. These events are meant for networks to attract advertisers, if only for them to buy time on said network. Earlier I said News Time had done episodes about the 2016 upfronts. Future Chad, show the people a flashback, but don't include the editing bay. I hope you didn't include it. Don't be a jerk. For 2017, I delved even further into the upfront advertiser process. Last year, they were set to spend upwards of $9 billion on the space between broadcast TV shows and TNT marathons of Lord of the Rings. I own the entire extended collections on Blu-ray, but I'm always sucked back in. In August, I talked about how Steven Soderbergh's elaborate way of getting the word out about Logan Lucky was important, especially for the South. That idea, coupled with why commercials were still important, tied to into an uh, entire topic. The same can be said for the November episode in which I discuss how networks who vie for advertisers to pair their products with their shows are looking to decrease ad time while increasing their viewership to battle growing streaming platforms. When you think about it, News Time is a very intricate show and you're welcome for it. As for the history of the upfronts, they began in the 1960s when TV executives would meet with advertisers in a much less fantastic setting. The first one, in fact, was held by ABC in 1962 when they put out feelers to see how ad men felt about their new shows. Eventually, the meetings grew to the mayhem we know today. The term upfront derives from the ads sold during the time ahead of the television season. Hence, upfront. You probably already gathered that. You, you might be a smart person. One thing that's different from last year's insistent $9 billion spending and subsequent pullback of ad space is the increase in the price of ad space themselves. It's the only way for ad buyers that work for networks to combat loss of said space. Media Post editor Wayne Friedman came to this very conclusion thanks to networks like NBC ready to test out less commercial time, something I hinted at newly, nearly two years ago when their longest-running series, Saturday Night Live was said to decrease commercials, but include more in-show advertising. They're taking it further by 
this time, including their primetime shows, following in Turner and Fox's footsteps, first reducing ad time by 10% this fall and 20% by a later date. But sometimes these promises can be empty. Pivotal Research Group, as sourced by AdAge, found that commercials actually increased this past year by a small margin, but it's still an increase nonetheless. Upfronts are more than parties. For the advertisers, they get their time on the main stage that they don't usually get. That means they're the ones getting schmoozed and booze, wine and dine and maybe 69. Who knows? People who work for agencies that work for big brands like Johnson & Johnson or Apple or Kellogg's are meant to attend lunches, go to fancy dinners, grab drinks, and whatever you can imagine all over Manhattan. New York Times contributor Sidney Ember followed Carrie Drinkwater, the director of investment of Mullen Low Media Hub, during a single day of the 2016 upfronts. The two hit Radio City Music Hall for NBC Universal's combined broadcast and cable presentation in the morning, followed by a lunch with a sales rep from a and &E Networks. Then came the Fox up front at Beacon Theater in the afternoon, followed up with an expensive dinner with NBC, and ending with a party courtesy of Fox in Central Park. Now that's a packed day, and it was only one day. Imagine that times four. Look at what's on tap for this year. This is the schedule people will adhere to, surely not attending everything, but a good number nonetheless. Is it still scrolling? Good God. Notice how the big upfronts take place in late May, while the less important ones occur throughout the end of March and early May. Regular networks are said to be focusing on growth rather than losses when comparing themselves to their streaming rivals. There will also include their ability to carry brand safe, read less curse wordy and nude filled shows. Plus, networks can also be braggadocious about their show's qualities, which is particularly fascinating seeing as how Netflix, Amazon and Hulu have all canceled more shows than their cable counterparts have on air. Of course, advertisers aren't just fighting to be paired with old shows. They want the hot new thing, too. They presumably get first looks at new pilots being presented to the network. Add, add that with shows already said to be coming back, and they're, they've got everything they need to get the gist of what products they'll be peddling on what shows. What can we take away from the upfronts? They're very important, not just for advertisers trying to buy time during a popular show, but also they're crucial for networks. You may not like them, but without ads, shows lose an important funding arm. And yeah, even your favorite streaming network for which you cut cable participates in the ad madness. Netflix buys time just like everyone else. Hell, even Amazon, a company that most definitely has more money than Netflix, buys time. No one is immune to it. It's what they do with that time that truly matters. Now, if you'll excuse me. I'd like to buy the world a home and furnish it with love. Grow apple trees and honey bees and snow white turtle doves. I'd like to teach the world to sing, sing with in me. perfect harmony. Perfect harmony. I'd like to buy the world a coke and, and keep it company. That's the real I'd thing. I'd like to teach the world what to the sing. World wants it. <sighs> I hope that the viewers know that they can subscribe like and check out one of our other videos. Of course, they can always go to the website cpluscomedy.com where there's a lot of stuff going on. They can always follow us on Twitter at cpluscomedy, follow me on Twitter at Chad Black White, like us on Facebook, and listen to the Constitutionals podcast. And now, I'm about to get my meditation on.